Let's go out to, let's go back to Canada and talk to Chantel with a pretty face. What's up, Chantel? Hi, how are you? Partying. What are you up to? Uh, not partying. I'm not either. I just lied to you. I just straight lied to you on my show. Sorry. I'm not. I'm just at work. (laughs) Let's, let's figure it out, dude. What's up? Um, so four years ago, I was a cyclist hit by a truck. Uh, oh, due to severity no. injuries. <laughs> yeah. Yikes. The process to heal both uh, legal and medically um, oh. are still ongoing. So for four very long years. Good grief. Um, the length of time passing is just like picking an old wound over and over and over again when I just want to heal and get past it. How can I rebuild my resilience when time and obligations keep beating me down? Oof. How honest can I be with you? Very. You're not going to like it, Chantel. Can we still be friends? I'm used to tough realities. <laughs> Do what? I'm very used to tough realities. Okay. The moment you decide I'm going to stop trying to get past all of this and instead shift your body energy and your focus to I'm going to metabolize this as this is my life. This is a part of my one tiny little precious life, then resilience can begin to do its work and grow roots in you. Right now, you have an electric leaf blower and you keep blowing the soil off and the roots can't take hold because you're waiting for this thing to be over and you keep cleaning it all off. You've been through hell. What are some of your injuries involved in this rack? Oh, uh... Uh, double, like two types of brain bleed, double pneumothorax, broken ribs. Um, I almost lost my left leg and I had to relearn how to walk. Uh, I have an ostomy. I had to have bladder surgery. I probably will never be able to get pregnant. Um, pretty, pretty awful. And how has the medical system navigating that mess in Canada been? Amazing. Like I have um, excellent health, excuse me, excellent health care and excellent Perfect. support. And even though, you know, COVID forced some surgeries to take a long time to get around to me because I was no longer emergent after, mm-hmm. you know, you patched up enough to be alive. Um, I've gotten surgeries that have increased my quality of life, which I'm thankful for. Wonderful. Um, what about your, the legal just, mess? Oh, God. <laughs> Legal mess is a mess. Um, up here in Canada, we have a process known as the catastrophic process when you have injuries as severe as mine. Um, and it's just long. You know, it's going to take a long time to settle because they're looking forward in my life and the quality of my life, you know, 10, 20 years from now and what these injuries mean since they're so life altering. Mm-hmm. So that's still ongoing. Okay. What have you done in the last four years to begin to re? imagine and live your life? I haven't been able to. Um, I've been in it. Like it's been four long years of uh, five or six appointments a week, legal or medical, multiple surgeries. We're talking seven to eight surgeries. Who's paying your bills? Uh, Well, here in Canada, like our medical is covered. Thank God. Um, And what about your rent? Oh, you're back at work. Okay. Uh, Yeah. I went back to work. Yeah. Okay. Good for you. Yeah. So resilience is not something you can think your way to. Resilience is a scratching and clawing one centimeter at a time, one inch at a time. And you look back without thinking. You turn your head and you realize you have crawled and scratched and clawed a mile. And you're not scrawling and you're not scratching and clawing anymore. You're suddenly up, you're you're crawling on all fours. And then you look up and you've got another mile. And you've got calluses on your hands and on your feet and on your knees. And then you put one foot down and you stand up. See what I'm saying? Resilience is formed on one step after one step after one step. Not on this idea that I'm past all of this. 
And what I promise you, I promise you, you are stronger than you could possibly imagine. Chantel, you got hit by a right. truck. And you and I are still talking. Yeah. I'm You're I'm still- lucky to be here. And I I acknowledge that and I accept it. Hold on. But I was, hold on, um, hold on, hold on. You're lucky to be here. Yes. Period. Move that over to the side. You are a gangster. You're a badass. You're still here. You're not giving Chantel the credit Chantel deserves. I feel like I've mentally accepted that though. Like that was then, and this is four years later and I want more. There I you want go. More than what do you, to have lit. Tell me, what do you want? I mean, I used to run marathons okay. and I was, just was an ecstatic person. Are you and ever going to be able to run a marathon I, again? No. Okay. We have to grieve that. That's a significant loss. That is a heartbreaking loss. That is you sitting down and writing a letter to Chantel, the marathon runner. Remember when. And now those days are over. This is sitting with a couple of girlfriends that you really, really trust and having written a letter to future Chantel to let her know we may not have babies. And that was a part of our ride, dude. That was going to be part of it. It's sitting in that ugly. And being What re- if I feel like I've been sitting in the ugly for too long and I just want to go like You can, but I don't think you're the I don't I I think you've sat in the mess, but there's some intentionality. You sat in it, but there's there's work, right? So if you if you're sewer uh here here at my house, I live out in the woods here, so I've got a septic tank. It's not connected to the sewer, right? I can go sit in the septic tank if it's if it's got a, if it's broken. It's disgusting. I can't think of a grosser thing to do. I can go sit in my septic tank. I can sit in there for years. But there's there's nothing productive that I've done. There. I've done any of the work. And if I tried to go back inside my house, my wife would be like, "Get away from my front porch," and I'd end up just outside. I'd end up in the wilderness, right? So there's something about using the being intentional in the darkness instead of just sitting in it and then wishing I wasn't in it anymore. I don't want you in it either. But I also want you to 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 with both hands grab a hold of reality. And that's so hard, man. Cuz this wreck took everything from you. It took your passions, it took your future, it took this this picture you had of what a family might look like. You're going to have a family that's going to look different, but this is what this picture was going to look like. And here's the process. And it took that from you. That's a, that's a, that's a stone cold reality that happened. And then what comes next? So you can't, you can't run marathons. What's next? I don't know. I'm trying to figure that out. No, you got to say it. You've thought of something. You've looked it up on the internet during one of your dark nights of the soul. What is it? I haven't. Maybe I'm just too stuck on what was. Part of the healing process, part of part of the counseling, you know, with therapists and physios has been maybe you gotta let it go, maybe you gotta find a new passion. But I don't know how. I haven't found something that breathes the same light into my soul yet. There was a moment years before you ran a mar- your first marathon when like my seven-year-old little girl just takes off running through the yard and her little blonde hair is flying all backwards and she's running so slow, but she thinks she is running a thousand miles an hour and she can run for about 50 yards before she's sucking wind. <gasps> Can't breathe. And that was the genesis of her wanting to run more and more. And there was a moment when that was you. It was a few steps that put wind in your hair and put a smile on your face. And over time, that turned into marathons. 
what you have to be willing to do, the, the bravery you've got in your guts, the courage, the moment of courage you've got in front of you is this. I got to take a few steps towards something. With one day, I might be able to run a marathon, whatever that looks like. I'm going to pick up a guitar and I'm going to figure out how to play this thing because one day I might play live. I am going to start a women's group for people who get hit by trucks and it's going to be awkward and weird and so uncomfortable because one day I might help heal families. I'm going to start the adoption process. You see what I'm saying? Yep. I can't tell you how bad the world needs you to take another step just in a new direction. Are you in? I'm in. Here's your first two steps. I want you to write Chantel, the, the, the athlete, the runner, a letter. And tell her what an honor it was to do life with her. How much fun y'all had, how many adventures you went on. And then to, as you end that letter, the last half page, the last two pages, let her know, and life threw us a curveball. Actually, life hit us with like a truck. And now we're going to have to make some changes. And it's been an honor. And we're going to do something different now. And that's not going to be the insta-cure, but what we're going to begin to do is teach our body that that was then, and that was a part of me, that will always be a part of me. And that part is that season is over. And now what's going to come next? And I promise you, if you spend some time, maybe you can't see it, but sit with a couple of girlfriends and say, we, we got to come up with 10 things and I got to try them. I got to take 50 yard dash in 10 different directions, not literally, but figuratively 50 yard dash in, in either direction. Remember seven year old Chantel running for the first time, just sprinting her little heart out. What's that next step? Resilience is not something you can just wake up and have. It's something that you find it's a strength and strength comes from pushing against heavy things against resistance. That's where strength comes from. I promise you, you're worth it. I promise you. I promise you.